Well, I'd like to uh, uh, talk about the uh, human photoprotective response, some of the uh, um, adaptations in our skin that have evolved to use vitamin, or use ultraviolet B for vitamin D photosynthesis and yet uh, protect ourselves from UVA. This is uh, the situation in unexposed light colored skin. There's the melanocyte, keratinocytes. These are little melanin packets. And here's the basal layer, the, the uh, stratum corneum, the, the horny layer, sometimes called spinosum. And let's uh, see what happens when I press this button. Here's the UVA. Notice how in unaccommodated skin, the UVA goes very deeply into the skin. It's, it's powerful. You can transilluminate your, your, your cheek with a flashlight. I don't know if you ever did that when you were a kid. You, you, uh, but um, it, UVA is like that. It can go way down in, deep into the skin. And it hits the melanocytes. There's no question about it, where it causes a lot of oxidative damage. It used to be thought that UVB was the culprit in malignant melanoma. UVA can reach the melanocytes and makes a lot of uh, photooxidative products that can be very damaging. Here's a, our favorite UVB photons coming down. And, and uh, these photons are the ones that initiate the human photoprotective response. These are all the, also the photons that are completely blocked by chemical sunscreens. So chemical sunscreens you know, block uh, tanning, obviously, and, and sunburn. But they also block the human photoprotective response. So let's see. Here's, here's what happens in response to the UVB. The stratum corneum thickens. And also, the melanocytes are stimulated to make more melanin. This is the uh, pheomelanin, the, the dark melanin that uh, is so effective in protecting the skin. There's also a eumelanin, the kind of reddish melanin that's a little less effective. Uh, and now we see that the, uh, here's the melanin that's been. Uh, induced by the UVB, and it's blocking the UVA and uh, attenuating the UVB, but the vitamin D photosynthesis can still occur in the upper layers of the skin here. So it's, uh, uh, this is a response to UVB that protects the skin from UVA that's completely obviated by the application of UVA blocking sunscreens. Now within, this is sort of a close-up view of of the keratinocytes. Within the keratinocytes, there, there's a, a migration of, of the melanin as well. And they go to the apex of the nucleus in the distal region and protect the nucleus. So it's a very interesting adaptation. And uh, it's uh, illustrated here in this uh, cartoon. <clears throat> well, here's a bottle of sunscreen. This is uh, for, for children. Uh, it's a 45 SPF. You're supposed to put it on often because the kid might go swimming, and, and be sure to you know reapply frequently. And and um, you know I think we have to look at whether this is a good idea. Now, this little girl's been around for about 50 years. I don't know if you remember. <laughs> uh, people think sunscreen's a recent invention, but uh, she's she's been been around for a while. So uh, you know I, I think we have to decide whether we like this or not. <laughs> well, this is, uh, these are the dates of introduction of, of suntan lotions and sunscreens. Now they're called sunblocks, which is, uh, a sunscreen is at least a little more descriptive because the sunscreens have huge holes in them. The sunblock, it's, it, it's, it's really not a sunblock, as you'll see. Here's the um, homosylate and the famous paraminobenzoic acid that were introduced in the late 40s. At, those, at that time, they were called suntan lotions. They helped you get a tan. Then they became sunscreens and later sunblocks. OK, well, here's a pop, a really popularized. We're getting up to SPF 6 or 8 now. Whoa, OK. Now we're up to 20. And these are the higher erythema blocks. And then I wanted to transpose this over age-adjusted malignant melanoma rates. Well, you know. Uh, uh, there's a temporal sequence here. It's a, it could be coincidence. <laughs> okay, now I'd like to show the ultraviolet B 
uh, range here, the terrestrial range, and this is the absorption spectrum of PABA, and it really wipes it out, uh, as you can see. Uh, PABA is a pretty good it's a bacterial vitamin, and it's good at blocking UVC, and it blocks uh, UVB, but nothing in the UVA. It's transparent to the UVA. So it maintains the skin in this very transparent state by blocking human photoprotective response that I showed and, and allows uh, the UVA to, uh, tr to uh, penetrate this unaccommodated skin. It also allows thousands of times the exposure to UVA so, uh, because normally a person would get a sunburn after half an hour, but if they're, take, if they're wearing 45, they can stay out 45 times as long. That's really what that, that number means. So. It's, uh, you know, dermatologists say, well, don't go out in the sun, but if you go out, wear this. It'll let you stay out 45 times longer. Well, does that make sense? Uh, I think we have to reevaluate re sunscreens. It, it, and uh, they, they've never been shown in a randomized controlled trial to prevent malignant melanoma. I think if sunscreens were a pill, that you swallowed, maybe the FDA would have paid more attention to them, but since they're just rubbed on the integument, they're considered uh, cosmetic. Uh, but they have this very powerful effect. They've irrevocably changed a relationship, a very ancient relationship between our skin and the sun. And it's one that, it's, an, it's a relationship that has evolved over millennia. So I, we should be very careful about putting these powerful chemicals on our skin, untested powerful chemicals. Well, here's uh, our friend Paba again, and this is uh, the action spectrum for melanoma. Uh, this is uh, uh, Dr. Setlow and associates who looked at a, a fish model of melanoma, and in this uh, very nice uh, swordtail platy, attractive aquarium fish, uh, and Dr. Setlow no noted he had an ultraviolet A light, and, and some of the uh, tanks he covered with a filter, and some he didn't, and the tanks he didn't cover, uh, these uh, little sword tail platys got these uh, big melanomas on their fins. So, so here's where Pob is absorbing and here's where melanoma is being induced. M not very helpful for the fish at least. Now we see here uh, the UVB portion of the spectrum in the UVA. And this is another sunscreen compound, one of the ones that's called broad spectrum. Well, not too broad, it doesn't even get into the UVA. And uh, it's, but it's a modern one, octomethacinamate, and it's in various solvents here. And you can see that it's, a, it's still absorbing in the UVB, but transparent in the UVA. Now there's an odd characteristic of these, like fluorescent light, like, a, like day glow paint. These compounds absorb in the UVB, then they have to do something with that energy. So they fluoresce it in the UVA. So they take those, our favorite photons, and change their wavelength and, and then fluoresce them in the UVA. It's a minimal contribution compared to the total flux of UVA, but it's, it's taking our, our favorite photons and making them into the bad actors when it comes to malignant melanoma.